You're a good God. As you are, you still are. You have no cloud of change. And your word is life. I put before you your servant. I know you're in with him. And your words are within him. And he is also within you. I beg of you, Lord, that you be with him. He has allowed to speak on your behalf the things you've given him to share with us. May the power of the Holy Spirit find us ready to Let us open the spiritual ears so that the Holy Spirit can minister to us so that we can hear what the Holy Spirit teaches so that we can know what the Holy Spirit requires the our hearts humble themselves such that you may be glorified Lord, we glorify you. And we honor you, Lord. So that you speak to our hearts. So that us not sit our hearts here. And yet our thoughts are not here. So that our thoughts are not here. And yet our thoughts are not here. I destroy every power. I silence every counsel. I silence every plan. I destroy every power. I capture the fights against the people. That they will not destroy the I silence the world. I silence every useless thing. I silence every that may rise against you. Let your name be acclaimed. Let your holy spirit speak. Let your holy spirit speak. Let your holy spirit speak. Let your holy Let your holy spirit speak. Let your holy spirit speak. Let your holy that they may have that your word will have authority. 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 And that in every heart of every man who is seated, we pray for the offering. You said, let us not come empty-handed in your presence. Let us not come empty-handed in your house. I bless everyone who has offered. Who has offered with a heart of will. Who has offered with a heart of joy. Even those that have not had what to give, and yet they desire an earth Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless each and every one. And those that do not have anything, may they have it next time in the name of Jesus. We are calm. We are calm. That your name be acclaimed. Amen. 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 Let us be seated. We're going to speak of the principles that take us from a curse to a blessing. I want to tell you, we usually talk of a principle. Principle is something of great magnitude. Because God operates in principle. This is why I want us to speak of a principle. Principle that takes us from being a curse and become a blessing. I want you to follow me. I want you to listen to my words. Because we are going to be in scripture such that we can understand what the word of the Lord requires of us. What is principle is great. The first principle, I want to speak of the principle of prayer. The principle of prayer changes or transforms a man's life. I want to, bring, to make you miss times of prayer please. more than you've ever prayed in your life. What is called prayer is something that changes a man's life. But today, we of us have failed and we no longer pray. In these days that the world is in a shake, 
people no longer have solutions but I want to speak over the principle of prayer in prayer there is authority that transforms a man's life and a man's life is wholly transformed this is why I desire deep within my heart that we turn into people who are named prayerful because when you are prayerful there is nothing that can attack your home without you knowing it there is nothing that can go past you without knowing it because in prayer there is a power of transformation a man who was humble and not popular they turn into a popular figure apart from those in the universe or the world the heavens take good care of a man who prays because a man who prays is valuable before the heavens today I want to speak of a prayer those who prayed and the lives of men changed. This is a great principle. Read 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 to 10. And Amen. Amen. Church. This man Jabez. Is a man who's going to be an example to us. The Bible speaks over his life. But when you read the prayer of Jabez, it means that there is a life of trial he was born in. There's a time when we are born in tribulation. We are born in a, a secular life. We are born in a poor life or in poverty. And at times, this life we are born in, sometimes we have repercussions of where we were born. And you find those consequences are what we encounter in our day to day life. When you're trying to prosper, that chain brings you back down. This is great. You find men are filled with fear. Because maybe they've conversed with their families or their parents. You find a person is raised or grows up. And they say, My father was killed by this deadly disease. And they died before reaching 50 years of age because in our family nobody reaches that age. And you find that a young woman in their kindred, nobody gets married. You find that another grows up in a family where, the, where people are barren. Others give birth to children and whenever they give birth, their children die. Many times you find there are repercussions of our kindreds where we came. But praise the name of God who gave us Jesus. Who gave us Jesus. And he separated us from all those chains. That is a victory that you own. And this is why the word tells me in the book of Matthew that you who are tired and heavy patterns, come to me and I shall give you rest people are tired 
people are tired because of different or various things. When you try and put a percentage on the population of those who are weary, you find a, it's a bigger ratio. Many people are tired or they are weary. A man who possesses money is tired. One who has a job is tired. The other who doesn't have a job is also tired. The greater tired, the humble are tired. What can give us rest? It is that we need to pray to the, our Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Can uh, rest you. Can rest. He consoles those who are. He is the only one where we need to tie ourselves. This man called Jabez was born in a life that you may also have been born in. He was born in a life of sorrow. Just imagine for a young man or a child to, be, to know that they were born in a life of grief. Just imagine you reach a time, a point, you get married and your wife gives birth without you having milk or anything to give or to provide for the baby or the mother. You look left and right and you find no solution. I imagine the life of Jabez was uh, similar to that. But because he was born and because God had spoken, because he was born and God had a plan for him, the word of the Lord tells me that he was raised and he was born and his siblings behind him, he was more honorable than them. He was more honorable than them. But he knew so well who he was. He said that even if I'm more honorable than them, there's a chain that puts me back or separates me from where I need to be. I want to tell you also who's listening. There are places you want to reach. There are things you want to achieve, but you can't There are places you want to stand, but you cannot stand there. There are things that are hindering you from reaching points in your life. But I tell you today, when you pray, because your prayer breaks down all demons, it breaks down all generational curses, prayer takes us from a demonic principality, prayer takes us from places of bondage. Jabez cried out to the Lord of Israel and he said I wish that you may bless me and you take away my grief but at times you're blessed you know God but you sleep you do not sleep at night because where there is blessing you cannot have insomnia insomnia but nowadays people give birth to children and they become their own stresses but, but when we pray God brings back our failed children to us he brings back our prodigal children. It is not only our children. When you pray, yet you're a man. Always pray for your wife and God changes them. When you pray and you're a woman, you pray for your husband and he transforms. Therefore, this principle called prayer is something great. This, this principle called prayer, when you read the book of Esther chapter 9, we find that a man called Mordecai and Esther, when the Jews were plotted against, but I want to tell you what changed the lives of the Jews. And the evil plans of Haman 
man yet he had given epistles for the use to be killed. It is prayer. I want you to listen and understand the principle of prayer. Esther chapter 9. Chapter 1. Verse 1 to 2. Kumusuachumi Nitake Praise the name of the Lord. This word is great. Among people who uh, encountered trial, it is the Jews. I thought of this so much. Did you know an envious person or a person who was jealous? Did you know an envious person is even envy for their housekeeper? Did you know an envious person? Even your housekeeper, you will be envious of them. Do you understand how this seed of the devil is uh, evil? You pay your house help, but when they are smart, you start uh, abusing them or humiliating them. Do you hear the power of envy? The level that Haman was at and the level Mordecai was at that is an example I'm giving. One was the prime minister and the other was a gatekeeper. But whenever Haman would see Mordecai, he was always envious of him. But the greatest secret that Mordecai had, that I'm going to tell you, he had built over a principle and apart from the God of Israel, apart from the God of peace, there was nothing he would prostrate There is no idol man. They shall bow before the God of Israel. Haman thought and said, I have authority to kill and to give life to any man. I am more honorable than any other in this kingdom. How come this gatekeeper does not bow before me? Always think of this. Instead of you thinking of your tribulation or the circumstances you're going through today, think of where you've come from. Think of what God has done for your life. Think of what God has made you go through. Think for you to be alive today. Think over all that before you think of the situation you're going through today. Mordecai thought of the God of his ancestry that he was called. The God that took them from Egypt. The God that made them cross the Red Sea. The Lord that dried up Jordan and they crossed over. The Lord that destroyed Jericho without them fighting. He said that is the God we shall bow before God. That is the only God that we shall pray to. And he said Haman. 
the secret that we have or we keep we cannot bow before you because we have signs and works of what God has done we have thanksgiving of what God has done for us I want you to start thinking of the thanks the testimony that God has done for your life you, you shall overcome a battle that you're encountering or you're going through basing on what God has done for your life and thereafter Haman was filled with uh, anger and he, st- he told the king Sarses that these men do not honor you. Let us do this. There is a proverb that says that a king doesn't kill but the population he leads is the one that kills. Listen to what he said. Listen to what the king said. He said that those who do not honor me go and do whatever you desire to them because the prime minister has spoken and it shall be so. They got all writings and letters. They got the scrolls and they spread them out to 127 nations. And they ordered that all Jews be killed. But when they reach a man called Mordecai who has dishonored me, may he be hanged on a, 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 a tree of a 50 feet. The news spread out and because Mordecai was seeing it, he knew of it. When you see something great that is going to happen, what do you do? Do you wail? Do you scream? That is why I want to speak over the power of prayer. The power of prayer fights battles. The power of prayer prayer fights battles that are near and those that are far. The power of prayer fights a man who's in the US yet you're seated here. Prayer gives you audience yet men have refused to do it. Prayer is your spokesperson. Prayer. Mordecai told the Queen Esther that the reason why you became a queen is for you to help us in times like this. For you to save us in times like this. Hallelujah. Esther encountered hardship in that she had not met the king for over a month. But Mordecai spoke of a great word. And he said, Queen Esther, if you keep silent in a time like this, and you do not do anything yet God has bestowed authority upon you, and you find yourself in this uh, position of queen. Why you're a queen is that a time like this the Jews may be saved on your behalf. But he spoke. He spoke boldly and said even there's nothing that shall hinder the Jews from being saved. And God shall go through any other way because you doing it is your own benefit. But even if you do not do it the Lord's name will be glorified and all God desires us for us to be bold and courageous men of valor. Esther knew so well that uh, uh, Mordecai was bold and courageous. He spoke of a great word. She said, go and look for intercessors. Intercessors intercessors who you're in accordance with, those that you know so well, get three days, 
And wherever I shall be, I shall also get three days. Let us tell the God who has done that the God who did those things that we know. He also can do other things for us. You go three days of prayer. I want to tell you that prayer prayer takes away conspiracies upon your life. Prayer takes away the plans of the demons upon your Prayer destroys fortresses of the enemy. Prayer speaks. Prayer when it comes to prayer, there is no mountain that is When it goes through prayer, there is no mountain. Every mountain shall burn. Every illness shall burn. Every poverty will be destroyed. Every mountain of grief shall be destroyed. Because when it goes through the channel of prayer, the principle of prayer Jesus prayed and was filled with great power for him to save us. Because when we pray, we are given new When we pray, we know the divinity of God When we pray, we speak to our Father. When we pray, when we pray, we stand before the principalities of the demons and they stand still. Prayer. Acts of the apostles, uh, prayer took Peter out of prison. Herod had planned to kill him, to behead him. But, but because he was a man who had prayed, did you know that when we pray that is when we are given promises because when we pray God adds years to our lives did you know that when you pray God remembers the works that you did a long time ago did you know that when you pray God instructs you not to drink water from a particular place yet you are going there did you know when you pray God reveals hearts of men to you prayer brethren there is power and authority in prayer there is authority prayer gets a humble man and acclaims them or glorifies them prayer Prayer breaks down all altars that we were born hey, in, demonic I'm altars, and you become a priest. You become a priest, yet you are not. We, our names are changed in prayer. Your name is changed, yet you are a prostitute, and you turn into a priest. Prayer is something great. I wish that you may have the principle of prayer in your hearts. When you are going to pray, know that you are going to pray. Let me tell you, when someone prophesies to you and says that, uh, uh, pray for three days or fast for seven days. Always fast because the devil never tells a man to fast or pray. Even if a man tells you, the devil can never tell you to pray uh, three days of prayer or four, seven days. It is God only. Therefore, when someone tells you, enter those days and pray more than you've ever prayed. Before. Because the God that sees what is beyond, he knows what we shall encounter. He sees all that that we shall encounter. And he says, I am a great God. That pillar of the principle of prayer is great and useful to our lives. That takes us from a life of bondage and curses and we become blessings. 
Second principle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is a principle of, of decree, the principle of declaration. The principle of declaration. The principle of decreeing. Decreeing where you want to reach. Decreeing where you're going. In other words, there is a power. The book of the Romans. The piece of Paul to the Romans, chapter. It says that when you decree that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and you believe deep within your heart that, the God, that God healed you that he uh, was raised from the dead that day you shall be saved do you hear the power of decree? Church, I want to tell you that always learn how to decree good things with your tongue. Today I'm going to tell you something great. At times we get out of prayer and we fasted. I want you to listen to how sometimes we dilute the word of the Lord. Uh, sometimes we've prayed, but then after listening to the word, you dilute it instead. After decreeing that we are victors, we've declared that we are heads and not tails. We've just declared that we shall live and not die. And in the next moment, after decreeing it with your mouth, when you go past that door, no, 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 fool. You start saying, now I'm dead. I'm no, finished. No, no, Hunger is going to kill us. No, 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 Loans are going to finish me. No, no, I don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. In other words, you have diluted your decreeing or declaration. Therefore, it is requires for you to do even if it is great in your life you must see where you're going to reach if you're a young lady you say I shall get married if you're a young lady you say I shall give birth. if you're a young man you say I will get married I shall prosper I shall prosper but today, people sit and say, nobody in our family has ever even nah, had, possessed a bicycle. Nobody has ever built a house. But where you are today, the God that you serve, or the king that you serve, is the king over everything. He can do everything and has everything within him. Therefore, it requires you to train your tongue to believe deep within your heart that you're a victor. Know that you're an overcomer. Know that you're a victor because the one that is with you is more important or greater than what is scaring you or what is bringing fear to you. When you pray and you declare, <laughs> this, is where, this is where this medicine works. When people say things are impossible, you've decided, uh, you've decided upon a particular thing. You've decided and you've got a good decision that gives God glory. Therefore, do not grow faint because of the decision you've decided. Know that it will be possible because I know this. I have seen a solution for this. Before I got married, while I was in a life of hardship, of calling, I 
the city has shaked me I wanted to run away from the city and go to the village to rest When I reached the city it was worse People started telling me you're growing old why are you not marrying Those that are of the similar age all of them are married I have nothing upon me what can you say you have no job you have even uh, borrowed the money the transport that brought you to the village it requires you to look upon Jesus and many times when you encounter such a situation it is night but after that night there is nothing else that is good apart from when it is night and it is dark in your life there is nothing that comes after the darkness no it is morning no Light is the one that comes. There is nothing else that is There is nothing else that is left. Hallelujah. And I said, even if it is night, even if it, my life is in darkness, in the city it is dark for me. Even in the village it is dark for me. But I say there is no other place. I said, God Almighty, God Almighty that I have honored. It is needed for me to see you. Those who told me such words, I declare to them, it was in September. Hallelujah. I said in August 2009, I said I shall not live in the village. I shall get married in the city and I shall not marry a woman from the village. I shall marry a woman from the city. All of you shall attend my wedding. Hallelujah. And they ridiculed me. Let me tell you, sometimes people ridicule you. But you have created your destination. You have created your destination. You have created your destination. I created my future. I told one of the pastors that had become my friend when time came for me to go and pay dowry I told this pastor please come with me let us go and pay my dowry I went with other four people and this pastor looked at me in a one bedroom house when there are wooden chairs in that house and he spoke of a great word that I'm going to tell you he showed me a church that was not even cemented and he said please take your reception there it is okay I had not yet become a pastor and I told him instead of me being a pastor like you I should die I'd rather die than be a pastor like you I was in Jiporoso I lived in Jiporoso at that time I said and I created and said at that time Hilltop was was the hotel that had a great conference hall and I told him that so that you know that I served a great God I shall have my reception in Hilltop Hotel. 
Let me tell you the power of declaration. The power of declaration. The power of declaration. Yo, The power of declaration. I went to one man and I told him, please lend me a, 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 a room of prayer and he lent me and I found that even his sitting room was, had mats only. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to get married in 2009. Please lend me your car and fuel it for it to take us the bride. And that man did not have a vehicle. How can you tell a man who doesn't even have chairs that lend me your car, your, your vehicle? I told Manuel, called Manuel. He's my close friend. He's my close friend. He prayed and said, I was prayerful. I was prayerful. I was prayerful. I, uh, he told me that pray for me if I get a job in the UN I shall, I shall support your wedding like I would support my own child's wedding listen to what God did this God that we pray, listen. Let me tell you, church. I want to teach you the power of declaration. I want to teach you the power of declaration. Thereafter, five people were competing for this position he wanted in the UN. And I told him, you'll come and I, let me pray for you. When evening came, I, God told me that, tell him, God has given you that job. Go and start working. In that time, that man, the one who didn't have chairs, uh, God gave him a tender to Manuel construct roads. And Manuel, his job was, uh, he found his job, he got his job. <laughs> These men, I want to tell you, power of salvation, even if people discourage you, even if men discourage you, stand upon what God has spoken. Stand upon what God has spoken. Even if things are bad, you say that things are good. You declare and say things are good. You say I shall prosper. Do not look at yourself in the as you're living today. Because the life of fear makes people stay in one position. But let us learn how to declare. Praise the Lord. Mama Olivier, Ingrid, Hallelujah. Mama Olivier, Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> The things that I know only me between me and her, we <laughs> prayed one time. <laughs> we prayed and <laughs> she had a million and she multiplied it into great wealth. <laughs> Did you know that one million can multiply into a <laughs> hundred million? If you <laughs> believe, it can become even 500 million. <laughs> we just need to declare and have faith. The power of declaration. 
May the name of God be praised. When we declare and we believe and pray, our life changes. We shift from bless from curse to blessing. <laughs> While I was conversing with her, I told her, fear not. They are looking at me in this the innocent that I am today. But the innocent that of the future is he is a great man. He calls things that are far off and they come. I, I sent away that pastor that I was telling you about. My faith showed me that I was My faith showed me that I would hold my wedding at Hilltop and it is a miracle that I did. Not at the last minute. After two weeks everything was accomplished. Someone came and gave me 50 uh, cases of soda. God did Young men, believe. Believe. Women, mothers, believe. Because when you believe, Jesus walks. Jesus walks. Jesus walks. Let me say this. This is what is destroying young men and women. You young women and men. What is making you not get married? At times you see everything from a, a, a physical perspective. You count everything in the physical perspective. When you always look at in the physical realm, always learn how to look at someone in the fleshly, uh, in the spiritual realm than the no, realm. When you have that secret, you shall stand upon the mountain of God Almighty. And even the mothers that we have today, even the, the people we have today, they always look at you and count and see how you've come. But when you see someone in the spiritual realm, you shall know them so well. This is another thing that is making people not get married today. I pray for Jidia. I pray for Ejidia for seven days and say, I want to get married to Ejidia. It is she's the one I want to get married to. And Ejidia looks at, for example, Nyonzima. Ejidia also prays for Nyonzima. Then Nyonzima also prays for Damian. And you find this chain that is, contra that is in contrast or Apart from you growing weary and growing tired and dying, single, but this is the secret of getting This is the secret of prayer. Learn how to declare and decree. Pray and say, I want a good woman like Ejidia who has a, a, a height of this. Create her create your own person learn how to create your own person learn how to create anything you desire create the person that you desire or wish to live with you shall be three young women praying for one young man and that young man will have other three young men praying for another <laughs> young man. but the Yo! principle of declaration <laughs> the third principle <laughs> that takes a man from curse a life of curse 
is the power of Yo, giving. Yo, The principle of giving. Giving uh, changes the life. Uyo monsa lano bishpe na kudatanga. Today people are killed by not giving. Muhima ni vya sagus. You give things the sap. You give God the surplus. Muhima ni shi. Vya sagus. Today you're giving God the surplus. Muhima ni vya sagus. Giving God your surplus. But if you think of what God has done for your life, praise God. If you think how God has protected your workplace or your job while others are unemployed, you think how God is building your home yet others are divorcing. I don't know what you can give God. Praise God. Let me tell you the secret of giving. If you want to grow wealthy, do not say it is prayer. That is an activity that is called faith that goes hand in hand with works. Amen. Amen. When a farmer gets his seed in the summer and he's going to plant them, apart from him uh, uh, planning ahead and saying maybe in September it shall rain, but in other words, you'll see it is almost a loss. But when you give, there is a Kenyan woman who's my friend. She's called Clemence. I knew her before I got married. She told me when you are uh, uh, when you give with a folded hand. Five doors are open for you. But let me tell you truly why people are poor today. Yes, we shall pray for this spirit, but let us always give so that we can destroy the power of poverty. The demonic principality of poverty is chased away by giving because giving is greater than receiving. When you read the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, God gave, gave his only begotten son. But God, if God asks you that give your child, who can give their own child here? If God asks you to give your car, would you give it away? Praise God. Let me tell you. Giving. giving flees demons from your home. Giving takes away the, the, the demonic power of cheat. Now, if God has given you 100,000 and, and you cannot give, even give 10,000 of a tithe, how can God promote you to more money or more wealth? Let us tell you the truth. Apart from him uh, promising you that I shall give you prosperity, it shall stay there. Amen. Let me request you to learn that principle. Uh, so that it, uh, people have it in their heart and they understand it. We are going to always teach you this every day. I want to help you chase away this demon of poverty from our church. This disease of poverty. I give you this idea. Prayer is one thing, but for this demon of poverty to leave our church, we need to give. Now, 
Did you know that people get their tithe and they go and give it to other poor people? Or you get your vow and you're going to now give it to the poor. That is wrong. Giving. As I conclude. The fourth principle is a principle of obedience. In obedience, there is power. In obedience, there is power. God told Abraham, get your only child and go and sacrifice him upon a mountain I shall inform you all. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. And while they were on their journey, listen to what Abraham did. His son told him, we have the knife and we have the firewood. But where is the lamb that we are going to sacrifice? You have obeyed, you are on your journey, but the devil operates in your own child. But listen to a man of God, Abraham. He declared where he was going. And he said, The mountain of the Lord, God shall provide. He did not shout before his own child. He said, Upon the mountain of God, God shall provide. When they reached the mountain while Abraham was going to sacrifice his own child, the heavens opened. Therefore, God wants us to obey and execute. These principles work and they are of great magnitude. They have great authority. This principle is This principle transforms our lives. When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, that if you obey, God shall do this. You shall be a blessing in the neighborhood you operate in. The seed of your womb shall be blessing. Your livestock shall be a blessing. At the seventh verse that adversaries shall attack you from one channel but they shall flee from you in seven ways. Hallelujah. These principles are great because the kingdom of the almighty is a kingdom of principle. As I conclude on the fifth principle we shall go uh, for, uh, further next time the principle of faith praise God the principle of faith Mark chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 that is where I want us to pray over and it says these are the signs that shall go with the faithful these signs shall be with the believers God desires us to have faith in him we have faith in different circumstances as we are going. We believe. We believe yet we do not see a way before us. We must have faith. Praise God. <laughs> Five things. Faith. This one has finished me. Five things. The first one. Five signs. In prayer, there are five things. We shall speak new tongues. We shall lay our hands upon the sick. And even if we drink poison, we 
We shall uh, chase demons in the name of Jesus. There's a pastor in Adepel called Sachindi. He amazed me. He was situated in Mujesera. They bewitched his food while it was being cooked and God told him he came and raised his hand and said he said God Almighty you give, uh, may you sanctify this food. After he prayed for the food he told his wife and children to eat. But he and they waited for them to die and it was in vain. He's, he's called Sachin in Adepel. He died. He passed on. Listen to what God told him when he was going. God told him you shall have an accident while you're on a motorbike. Immediately when a vehicle knocked him, he died. He even knew the time he was going to die. Let us stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, church. These five principles that we've spoken over transform us into blessings from being cursed. Let us stand on our feet. As I pray, let me tell you fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Go in your home and pray. Kneel and pray. While you're going to sleep, kneel and pray. When you're going to work, kneel and pray. When you go back home, pray. When you are awaken in the night, pray. Let us pray. So that we can change our lives into a prayerful life. Pray for your brother. Pray for your friend. Pray for your church. Pray for your nation. We must pray for our nation. Because at the point we've reached nowadays, when the house of your adversary is burning up, if you're not careful, even your own house shall be burned. If this third wave of corona is in Uganda, we must pray and pray diligently. We need to tell God, God, save and redeem our nation. And our God is able to do it. Let us pray. God of hosts, we thank you. We glorify you. You're a God of principle. You're a God of great glory. You're a God full of authority. I pray for your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. I separate them from any principality that I was working on. I separate them from every spirit that was working I separate them from their generational curses. I flee the voices of the demons upon their lives. I chase away fear from their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. I chase away the power of disease. From their I declare victory upon them. I declare victory upon them. I declare power. I declare peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for them. Bless them, Lord. May your blood, Lord, manifest upon them. May you take them to another level. May you take them from one level to another. The mighty name of Jesus. I ask for protection upon their lives. I declare the sign of the blood upon, them, upon your people. May you protect them from oh, everything. Protect 
Protect them from pandemics. Protect them from voices of the demons. Protect them from the voices of the demons. Protect them from every power of disgrace. Protect them from every power of demons. We declare long life upon them. Thank you, King of Kings. That they're going home. Protect them throughout the week. And secure our nation. Protect all its borders. Protect in the interior. Protect our leaders. The mighty name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. Protect your body, Christ. The mighty name of Jesus. May you support it. May you protect our family. Our protect our extended families. Protect. Protect our husbands. Protect our children. I declare power. Thank you, King of Kings. Glory be yours. Now and forever in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen.